I am a zoophile. Hello, I am Yage, the Talking Sunglasses, but today, I kind of wish I wasn't. Today, I will be going through the online presence of a known open zoo file, Hypnotist Sappho. This video is not a rebuttal or a response to anything specific Sappho has done or said. This is just me kind of covering their somewhat short-lived presence online. I mean, they are still kicking around, I know, but I, I do want to move on to different topics after this. So this is just the things I've collected while looking into this. So I've kind of broken them up into sections. Early on the internet, the cult of Sappho, them coming out as a map and uh, grooming miners. That being said, uh, there will be some heavy topics at some points throughout, obviously. So, you know, I'll warn you before we get there. But with all that being said, this might be a long one. So uh, let's just dive in. So the earliest postings I've found related to the Sappho's character is uh, their VR chat hypnotist sessions. It's swaying around, it's really comfy. Right. Um, it's like a really gentle breeze and- Ugh, what has my life become? Anyway, there are 19 of these weird sessions, ranging from sleeping or relaxing to cuddle time and caboose relax. Okay, I'm convinced the internet was a mistake at this point. Anyways, then Sappho uploaded their infamous coming out video. Just about myself and my beliefs. And I want to clear the air and say that, for the record, I am a zoophile. You did not mishear that. I am a zoophile. And then around the same time, they started their Twitter. I personally didn't learn of Sappho until Tom Dark posted his video on them and uh, started covering myself. For the most part, the posts were just your average gross pro zoophile shit. But because they had gotten the attention of creators like Tom and uh, Harley TBS, and even before them, and like before uh, Tom and Harley found it, Coyote Lovely had already been responding in videos and Twitter for a while. Uh, honestly, Coyote was the first one to push uh, Sappho onto the defensive. I'll link all of these videos down below, and I really, really, really recommend uh, checking out the Coyote videos if you are interested in that era because his videos explain that era much better than I ever could. Anyways, so now uh, Sappho is on the defensive, so tweets are starting to get longer, like the uh, mega thread that I already responded to. But they also start to get a little culty, and shit starts to escalate very quickly. So to start this section off, I'm just going to straight up say I am not a cult expert. I watch a couple channels that cover cults, uh, Telltale being the major one, I guess. So at best, I'm just kind of a dude who watches YouTube videos, which is kind of true for most of my content. Huh. Anyway, kind of first started to notice some very culty things starting to form around Sappho after they had been in these couple back and forths online with uh, like Coyote and a couple other people. And then I started to notice that Sappho and a few others in the community, <coughs> Becca, <coughs> oh, oh, jeez, sorry. Anyways, pushing things that make it seem like anyone who's not a zoo hates zoos. And this is where the video starts to get a little bit darker and heavier due to the fact that a lot of the tactics they 
views work very well on young people. And that is definitely the demographic Sappho wanted to be around. But we'll, we'll get to that. Uh, they also started Zeta North America with Sappho or Valerie as a chairman. This did not last very long and it's already pretty much crumbled to the ground due to all of uh, Sappho's shit. Uh, but back to the cult stuff. I also found a screenshot that someone had shared of a recruitment message that was a little weird. I'm going to read that message really quick because I feel like that's the only way to really emphasize how culty this message really is. So, hello there, my dear zoo friend. I am writing from Sappho, as she has sent me on a mission to recruit people on the non-profit organization Zeta North America. We are looking for new members to support the zoos and Zeta. What we are looking for are members and artists. I know this is sketchy that I am writing on a newly created profile, but Safa requested me to make a new account and write to people about it. Also, we have no age requirement to join. No age requirement to join. And be a part of something great. And if you have something to ask about the Zeta North America organization, then write and DM me. I fe or feel free to ask. When you join, you will have to sweat to follow the Zeta rules and never harm an animal and always have consent before and then it pretty much, yeah, just goes over kind of the Zeta principles. But God damn it. It's not just me. That, that, that was really culty, wasn't it? Or, or am I just crazy? But this is truly where it started to kind of get out of control. And this was right around the beginning of December. Around this time, Sappho blamed the anti-community of harassing a minor to the point of suicide. This was actually a very confusing and hard couple days, trying to figure out if they were telling the truth or not, or just trying to make people look bad. It did come out a couple days later that the minor in question was still alive and from what I've seen Sappho might have just jumped to that because they stopped replying which makes me personally feel like they tried to use it as a gotcha but this is also where the kind of anti-community became absolutely devoted to getting Sappho deplatformed and hopefully have some sort of real life consequences. Some people have taken this too far in my opinion and resorted to things like doxing and I just do not agree with doxing. If you manage to track down and figure out who and where Sappho is and that belongs with the proper authorities so it can be handled properly, not on the internet for some mouth breathing moron to see and take actions into their own hands. Not only because that doesn't help anyone's argument and just enforces their us versus them mentality. But also, if there is even a 0.000001% chance that information is incorrect and you could end up hurting or ruining an innocent person's life, it's just not worth the risk. And that's, that's just where I land on doxing. Sorry for the tangent, but when I saw all this going on, it really bugged me. So after all this shit was kind of debunked and, you know, shit's ramping up, some pictures of a miner that carved MS into their skin. Uh, and MS stands for Mama Sappho, which is something I saw a lot of accounts that were following and interacting positively with them. I'm not going to put it here because it, it is kind of graphic and honestly, you can probably find it kicking around on Twitter somewhere still. But a lot of those accounts were also the accounts of minors and a lo just a lot of the accounts interacting with them in general were of minors. And this is where people started really digging into the community itself and started to suspect and accuse Sappho of grooming minors. And there was also some evidence to go along with this, but that is what we'll cover in the next section. On December 14th, Sappho put out a rather large thread. Uh, I'm not going to go through the whole thing. I'm just going to tell you how it ended. Sappho, 
is a map. Uh, for those of you who don't know, a uh, map is a minor attractive. You know what? No, it's it's a pedophile. Ma maps are pedophile. There, there's no other way to say it. And also started an an NSFW page where they were posting cub porn, which is essentially lolly for zoos and really weird furries. Zoo CP, if you will. Really not defensible. Well, unless you're Sappho. Sappho also has a mommy kink and likes to pretend to be the zoo community mom. And it's gross. Especially knowing how many minors they've been interacting with online. They also became very, very open about all this. And it's actually kind of fucking ridiculous that someone can be like this. They use some insane mental gymnastics to justify their bullshit. And then kind of lied about you know, the gross NSFW Twitter account interacting with minors, which, you know, they were. Shortly after coming out as a pedo and posting about it for a couple days, they ended up getting banned off Twitter. Then the NSFW page went down. They tried to make a new account and it got banned in front of my eyes as I was seeing if there was anything worth grabbing. There wasn't really, just kind of Sappho spurging a little bit and posting that kind of some of the same old shit. So the first couple of days of Sappho being completely wiped from Twitter, a lot of things about their private conversations and relationships came to light. Uh, this is where people started to see exactly how bad Sappho was behind the scenes. Before this, it was just kind of speculation, but screenshots started to go around on Twitter that showed some evidence of Sappho dating a 16 year old. But as I mean, as of right now, uh, an account named uh, Shark Anti Mode has some of the best evidence I've seen, and I'll link his Twitter below. I, I recommend checking it out if, if you kind of want to see get the entire picture. Shark has testimony and evidence of Sappho grooming a minor and the tactics used, starting with screenshots of them guilt tripping the minor. Sappho also. I guess he used love bombing and honor like hypnotherapy sessions earlier on YouTube. When asked about it, the minor told Shark that the affection and from things like that made him kind of feel obligated to stay and kind of go along with the us versus them mentality and kind of all that kind of manipulation that have we've already kind of talked about a little bit. Continuing down the thread. Shark goes on to point out that even before coming out, they had sexual tendencies outside of videos. It has a link of an NSFW audio clip of a cuddle and nuzzling session. It's gross. N not going in the video. It's just, trust me, don't listen to it. It's it's gross. Uh, moving back to Shark's conversation with the minor though, when asked if Sappho ever requested nudes, the minor told Shark that nudes were sent on both ends while the minor was being groomed, which is horrible. Apparently Sappho also had an alt account that would comment and post sexual things toward the minor on Twitter. I am going to censor the one image completely because it's gross and I cannot unsee it, especially with the message. It, it, it's gross. I'm not 100% if this was actually a Sappho alt account. So, you know, take that with a grain of salt, I guess. It was also revealed that Sappho had become aroused by a 13-year-old making sexual comments about her. The minor shark was talking to uh, even told Sappho at the time that what she was doing was highly illegal. Because I guess this was happening in group chats consisting of people mostly 16 and under and Sappho. In these chats, people would openly sexualize Sappho and she would enable it for her sexual pleasure, I guess. I mean, that's kind of, that's what they say in the thread. One of the final things of note in the thread is that Sappho would send the minor audio recordings of them moaning. And Shark states there is even one of her moaning the minor's name, but understandably and rightfully so, he did not post that one. Because that, that is honestly one that deserves to just be in the hands of the proper authorities and not on the internet. But again, Shark Anti Mode has been doing a fantastic, or he did a fantastic job with all this. Uh, you know, go send, if you have a Twitter, go send them some support. I'll have their Twitter link down below. But uh, with that being said, I think it's time to wrap this video up.
Since their ban, things have been popping up here and there, and I have seen that they've even been potentially seeking help and are questioning even being a mapper zoo. Coming out video has been taken off the channel, along with the Zeta North America announcement video. Uh, and if they're seeking help, that is honestly good for them. And it's probably one of the best outcomes people covering this could have wanted. That being said, I also don't believe Sappho can ever be trusted with a platform again. They abused the small amount of power they got from relatively small compared to other channels that have been, or other people that have been exposed with much bigger followings. And honestly, it is kind of nice to see, to see things be stopped before they get a platform big enough to hide behind, because we've seen that a lot. I've also heard about some law enforcement investigations going on, but I honestly don't know the validity of that. But uh, other than that, unless they, you know, come find a way back and end up getting worse, I think this is where my delve into the zoo file community ends. I mean, our old pal Becca did try to take up Sappho's man mantle of worst person on Twitter until their second account got banned. And from what I've seen, she's not coming back. And honestly, I just, I wanna, I also just wanna start covering more YouTube related topics. Uh, I have a couple ideas that I'm pretty excited about. I honestly didn't expect to go down this crazy of a rabbit hole when I decided to do my first Sappho video. It was supposed to be, you know, a kind of fun, make fun of the gross person kind of video that turned into three months of shit. And you know what? I blame Tom Dark. Yeah, Tom, it's all your fault. And even though you will never see this and will probably never even know who I am, we're beefing. Yeah, yeah, Tom, I'm calling you out. You're a dick. <laughs> even though if you do see this, you'll probably destroy me. Shit. Anyways, thank you for watching. Uh, give me your thoughts on any topics I should cover moving forward, either in the comments or on Twitter at YT with a three instead of an E. Like if you liked it, dislike if you didn't, subscribe if you want more. I've been Yage, the Talking Sunglasses, and I'm coming for you, Tom.